How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome back to another tutorial. This tutorial is going to be really exciting. I've been working on this for a very, very, very long time and I have let it sit there for so long and then I came back to it and I solved the problem and I made a very, very cool thing. What we're going to be programming today is gamepad control, which I've already done a video on gamepad input and whatnot. We're going to make some updates to that, but we're also going to be programming in the crosshair and 360 degree motion for the gamepad. This is going to be really cool. And this is still experimental. I mean, it works pretty well, but for the most part, I'm going to continue to tweak this and I'm going to uh, compile together my projectile template at some point in the next week or two. Uh, and that'll be for sale. It'll be pretty much every single bullet type I've ever made with everything that I've done in the past with the running gun and so many cool things. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't seen it, but we're going to add in all these bullet types, all these types of weapons. And now that we finally figured out how to do this with the gamepad, it's just going to be that much better. But I am going to show you how to do it with the gamepad. I think it's just such good information that I can't not pass up telling it to you. So here's what we're going to do and here's what we already have. We have our player with our animations already set up. I have a gun from the running gun already kind of halfway set up. And then I have our reticle, which we've been using in the past few videos. So what we're going to do is we are going to tie them all together again. Let's hit play and see where this is at. And actually that means that I need to play from NWJS real fast. Let's switch this over and Let's hit play. So we can, we actually don't have any controls whatsoever. Okay, great. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up our gamepad. Now, if you haven't done this before, uh, you're going to need a gamepad to do this, obviously. So make sure you plug your gamepad in and make sure you include the gamepad plugin into the project. By default, the retro style projects just automatically have them, but if not, just add them as a new object. What we're going to do is set this up for our movement. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to go into our gamepad and we're going to compare the axis. Now, gamepad lets you have, imagine you had two, three players. Gamepad lets you detect for that. So that's what this parameter here is. It says gamepad zero, that means player one. If this was number one, that means player two. So we're only going to be, detect be detecting for player zero. Make sure your gamepad is plugged in, Xbox 360 controller. What we're going to do here is we're going to compare to see if our X axis is greater than zero. Then what we're going to do, and actually let me do the action first. If it is greater than zero, we're going to have the player simulate control to the right. Now, this is very basic and this is kind of where the input tutorial on my gamepad left off. We need to actually block the Y axis from interfering with the X axis. So to do this, we're going to copy and paste this and we're gonna flip this and we're gonna say if the left analog Y axis is less than. Now, what we wanna do here is we wanna get the axis. So by doing this, we're gonna get the gamepad dot axis and I don't believe it tells us what this does but this is going to take two parameters the first is going to be the gamepad so this is number zero and the second is going to be the index we don't need to worry about the index right now we just know that it needs to be at zero so once we are limiting that y axis we're going to copy and paste and we're going to then flip this to say if we are greater than negative gamepad axis at zero zero now this is going to limit our Y axis from moving and this is what we need because otherwise your Y axis is going to simulate uh, pressing right if you're pushing it up with the left analog. So what we're going to do next is we're going to copy and paste all of this and what we're going to do is we're going to switch this to left and let's do that. And what we're going to have here is we're going to just flip it. We're going to say left analog is less than or no, just less than zero. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have the Y axis less than negative, actually I think everything else is the same. I think we can, le or no, this is gonna be less than negative and this is going to be greater than not negative, just like that. Okay, cool. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go into our gamepad and we're going to say is button down. This button in question will be A for the gamepad zero and we are going to simulate jump. So let's see if all this works. If you're new to gamepad, hopefully this is kind of making sense. You need to trigger your gamepad somehow by default. So just hit a button on the gamepad. And there's other things that we can do to make sure that our gamepad is connected that you probably do behind the scenes in the menu uh, to detect if your gamepad is connected since this is just a test. 
Uh, I don't have any problem with just hitting the button to activate our gamepad, but cool. Everything's working when I go push the left analog up and down, we can't move at all, which is great. And if we're moving left and right, we are indeed moving, which is also great. So here is where this gets complicated. We want our right analog to control our positioning, our orientation. We want this to go left and right. We want it to mirror when we do that. So we have to set up a few things. Now it's actually a lot easier than it looks, but man, this took me so long <laughs> to do. Uh, and I feel a little simple that it took me this long to do, but at the same time, I'm really, really, really pleased with this effect. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to add in, this is going to be very, very familiar. We're going to add in our player, compare the X position. We're going to compare the X position and we're going to find out if it's less than our object reticle dot X. Then what we're going to do is we're going to tell our player to set itself to not mirrored because it's facing that way. And then we're going to tell our gun to set it to not flipped. So let's type in flipped set this to not flipped. Now we're going to hit X to make an else statement and we're gonna flip both of these. So this is going to become mirrored and this is going to become flipped. Okay, so none of this is going to work because we haven't actually tied in our gun object yet. And to do this, we need to now set its position. So if you see here, you can, let me just zoom in. You can see that the origin point is to the left so I can rotate around the left like that. And what we wanna do now is we wanna actually set the position first before we set the angle of this. We wanna set the position to, let's see, we wanna set it to X and Y coordinate of our image point gun. So object uh, player dot image point X gun. Now my player already has that from previous videos. So we know it's there, it's right in the middle of its hip point Y gun. Okay, so now if I hit play, the gun should be attached to us every tick. Cool, and we can still walk with it and whatnot. Let me hit A to activate our gamepad, and we can walk with it. And you can kind of see that since we're rotating around the, uh, the reticle object, which is right there, that it's flipping, which is good. We're halfway there. So now what we want to do is we want to set the angle. And generally what I would do is I would set the angle towards mouse.x and mouse.y and that would move it around the mouse, which is what I'd, I've done in the past and it works just fine. To do this for the gamepad, we're going to set the angle around the reticle. So let's set the gun angle, uh, not angle, angle towards position to object reticle.x, object reticle.y. But now we need to actually set up our reticle. So to do this, let's add a, let's add some behaviors to this. The first behavior we're going to add is the bullet behavior. Surprisingly, we're gonna add the bullet behavior to it and we're going to make sure that the angle, the set angle property is turned off. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add the, hmm, let's think we wanna add, um, we're gonna bind it to the layout for now. Let's bound to layout. Okay, so what we're going to do with this is we're going to need to set it up so we control the speed of this. And we want to set it up so it rotates around the actual gamepad axis. And to do this, we're going to need a global variable to, to hold our speed. So we can just call this our gamepad speed. This isn't really a dead zone, so we can just call this our gamepad speed, sensitivity, whatever you want to call it. Let's set this to... Let's try 450 and let's go down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to detect or we're going to compare the right analogs. Let's go to gamepad. Let's compare the axis of the right analog X axis. We want to find out if it's not equal to zero. And if it's not equal to zero, then we want to set the object reticles angle of motion to the angle, which grabs the yeah, let's let's see how we can explain this correctly. If I type an angle here, you can see that it's going to get the two points. It's going to grab the angle between two different points. So in this case, the two different points that we want to grab are going to be zero and zero. That's our x1 and our y1. Then we want to grab gamepad dot axis zero and two, comma gamepad dot axis zero and three. So remember, the first part of that is our gamepad player one. 
uh, which is what the zero is for. And then our two and three are our index. And we can look up more about indexing later. I kind of just want to finish this and show this to you. Uh, I don't want to overcomplicate you with anything. So what we're going to do next is we're going to set the reticle to our speed. We're going to set the speed of the bullet to our gamepad speed, just like this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to hit X. And if this is not true, or yes, if this statement is not true, then what we're going to have happen is we are going to set the speed to zero, just like this. So it's going to stop. Okay, so now we've programmed in all of the hard parts, but we still need to tie in our camera control. So let's see what we have so far. So now when I hit A, we can actually move the angle. You can look at the gun. You can move the angle around with the gamepad. And we can change the speed of this um, by simply just changing the number of our global variable. But this is good. It's, we're off to a good start. What happens if we add the scroll to behavior to the reticle object like we've done uh, in all of the videos that we just, we've just been doing over the past week? Let's add in the scroll to behavior and let's hit play. And now we can actually scroll around and this is right here is where I felt so relieved because this is what I was after. I was trying to get it so it would rotate around the object and when it stopped, it would stop the gun angle from moving, which is what the mouse does automatically. But for the gamepad, it's a little bit trickier. And to me, I'm very happy with this. It's bound to the layout so it can't go out. I'm very, very happy with this. But then I said, well, wait a second, what if I lerp this? What if I put the two together and I actually lerp the crosshair to the player? And when I did that, I actually got a really, really cool result. So first things first, let me go to my project properties. Let me turn pixel rounding off. Otherwise the lerp will snap between uh, integers or is it the other way around? It'll snap between either float values or integers. Yeah, it'll snap between integers and then it'll look really, really funny and create a weird blur effect and we don't want that. What we do want to have happen is we want to set our object reticles position. We want to set it to lerp between itself.x, object player.x, and 0 0.05. We're going to lerp this between self.y, object player.y, and 0 0.05. Now this is optional, and I think, did I type that incorrectly? Yes, this is completely optional. You don't have to do this because I'm fine with it the other way, I'm fine with it this way. This is just the experimenting, the enhancing of this. When I hit play now, you can see that it's always going to lerp back to me. It's always going to come right back and it's also going to limit where I can actually move. And this to me just feels amazing. This is great for an action platformer gamepad control. I love this. The only thing that I would probably change in the future for my projectiles template is I think I'm going to have it lerp between a mask for the player. And what I mean by mask is I'm gonna have a bigger object that would be invisible to you, but it would be around the player and it would probably stop the crosshair probably like right there. So when it stops lerping, it's gonna come back. I'm probably gonna set it I'm going to offset it by doing that, or I could probably offset it with numbers, but I'll mess around with this. This is really cool. So now when we walk past and it compares our X position, we flip both our guns and our player's position. I'm so, so happy with this. This is, I just can't get over how much fun this is and how cool this is and how simple the actual solution was. Minus the fact that we kind of didn't really explain um, the gamepad axis, it's a little tricky to understand. So I would recommend reading all about it. There's a whole bunch of articles on it and I'll link them in the description below. Um, because it's, it's just not something that I wanted to explain. I would be more comfortable just kind of showing this to you and seeing where we can go. So really, I'm so thrilled with this. I hope that this has made a lot of sense to you and I hope that you can implement this into your game and that I've just, hopefully this is just a lot easier and then you actually having to look for all this information yourself. This has taken me a very long time. I've been doing a bunch of different projects that kind of got in the way of this, but uh, before that I was messing around with the dead zone and trying to get this to work with a whole bunch of different math. And I'm so happy that I was able to simplify this to this. This is just so great. So really, Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for all the nice comments this past week. Thanks so much for sharing the videos and liking the videos. Please continue to do so. Please send me in all the comments, all the tutorials that you want to see. And now I'm going to ask you this as well. 
What other programs do you want to see? I know a lot of different software besides Construct 2, and I would never, ever get away from Construct 2, but I want to just do a bunch of different tutorials in After Effects or Game Maker Studio or Unity or something like that. So let me know if there are other tutorials that you guys are after uh, in addition to Construct 2, because I'm going to continue to do this as long as I keep finding new stuff to make and make it fun and and easy for you guys to understand. So thank you so much for watching this video. I will be back soon with another video and a few different uh, products that are coming out that I'm really, really excited about. So make sure you check out the description below and follow me on Twitter at Jerementor if you want to see more live updates. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.